Hi, my name is Jenny Opolinski and I'm the Curator of History for the Panhandle Plains Historical Museum. Super Bowl Sunday is filled with many different elements. Which teams made it, where to watch the game, who is performing in the halftime show, what commercials have been created, and what food am I going to eat? Thinking about all these elements gave me a headache, so I decided to look inward at the NFL and football itself, to the game, and more importantly, the equipment that is needed to keep players safe. Every piece of equipment, seen and not seen, is specifically designed for its role in protecting the player. Each piece of equipment has been engineered over the years to perform as efficiently as possible with scientific theory being applied. But things weren't always as scientific as they are today. The origins of equipment started with individuals using everyday found materials to protect themselves in a sometimes dangerous game. The first shoulder pads were created in 1877. A Princeton football player sewed thin quilted layers onto his shoulders as padding to his issued jersey. The 1890s introduced leather pads which were used to be strapped onto the exterior of the uniform. In the 1930s, today's recognizable pads take shape. Made of leather with a structure, they featured laces to adjust the fit and offered greater protection than the individual leather pads of before. Helmets began in 1893 when a player was told he couldn't play in the Army-Navy rivalry game due to previous head trauma. Another hit could have caused him instant insanity. The player went to a shoemaker and had a moleskin hat with ear flaps fashioned as head protection, and the helmet was born. The stabilization of plastics introduced the plastic helmet in the 1940s, and padded helmets began shortly after that. Face masks, which began as only a single bar near the jawline, were added in 1955. Beginning in the 1980s, high-performance synthetic materials were introduced. These materials were lighter, more durable, and scientifically tested as pneumatic shock absorbers. Beginning in 1994, quarterbacks have a radio inside their helmet, which allows them to communicate with the coaches. Helmets today consist of a shell, jaw pads, and air bladders, face mask, chin strap, and mouth guard. Each player's head is measured to determine which size of shell is used. Padding, both foam and inflatable, are customized to each player. An appropriate fitting helmet will not shift or move, essentially becoming another part of their head. Today, the shoulder pads are one of four body pads that protect a player from injury. The other pieces are the hip, thigh, and knee pads. These are the most recognizable because while they are not seen, they give each player a unique shape under the jersey. They are also the most intricate piece of equipment that a player wears. Shoulder pads perform two vital tasks. One, they absorb some of the shock of impact, and two, they distribute the shock through a larger area so there's less pressure at the point of impact. As important as these are, they also need to be lightweight and not restrict the movement of the player. Football equipment is continuing to be developed every day. Every year, the NFL considers new items and technologies for integration into the game. The end result, of course, is to keep the players as safe as possible.